This week, we are going to be learning about application software, and you are going to learn some fantastic, amazing, hands-on skills. I'm going to teach you some really cool stuff, some of the basics when working with various forms of application software. For instance, with Microsoft Word, I will teach you how to write an amazing paper, an amazing paper, because it's not only what you say in life, it is also how you say it. It's not only what you say, it's also how you say it. And in fact, when they study this, uh, studies show that uh, the largest impact upon an audience isn't what is conveyed, the content. That's not what has the largest impact on an audience. But the thing that has the largest impact on an audience is how it is conveyed, the form. So if you turn in a great paper with amazing content, but it's poorly typed and it looks like crap, uh, you're not going to do as well at that paper. Uh, if you turn in a paper with mediocre content, but it looks amazing, it's well formatted, it's got headers and footers, it's got a table of contents, a title page, a bibliography at the end, you know, and it's got the right uh, citing of references in it, inside of it, uh, that paper will do really well because it looks good. So it's kind of a sad irony that people pay more attention to what is said. Uh, sorry, it's a sad irony that people pay attention to how something is said more so than what is said, <laughs> as I say that poorly. That's funny. All right, so uh, I'm going to teach you that with Microsoft Word. With Excel, I'm going to show you some basics with Excel. Uh, so you'll learn how to write formulas and use uh, relative and absolute references. And then I'm also going to point you towards a resource where you can fill your head with as much Excel as you want and become a master at using Excel because Excel spreadsheets are a really important program. I'm also going to teach you about databases, and uh, I've seen a lot of people teach databases, and I've never seen anybody explain databases as well as I feel like I explain it, uh, because I've got a really simple way, which I figured out, for people to understand how relational databases work. So you're stoked because you get to learn about relational databases from me. So I'm going to show you what a relational database is, and using Microsoft Access, I will uh, demonstrate how you create tables, how you can create relationships, what referential integrity is, uh, you know, and how to do queries, and you will know all that by the end of this week. So you're going to know some amazing stuff in word processing, spreadsheets, and databases. Plus, I'm going to show you a lot of other very cool application software, uh, which will just be useful in your life. So when we talk about computers, again, we have this way of sort of categorizing computers. At the top, we have computer. Oh. And we break computer down into hardware and software. And then we could further break hardware down into IPOS, right? These different hardware components. We spent a lot of time looking at the I.O. components. We've also looked at the storage component. We've also looked at the processing component. And then last week, what did we do? We went and we started looking at uh, system software. So software could be broken down into system software and application software. Last week, we took a look at system software. And in particular, we saw how system software could be broken down into operating systems, utilities, and drivers. And we really looked a lot at operating systems last week, including a lot of stuff about Bill Gates. But this week, we are looking at application software. So software could be broken down into system software and application software. And this week, we're looking at application software. You might be asking yourself, why? Why, Todd? Why? Why are there no categories down here beneath application software? And, uh, well, if you want categories there, feel free to create your own. You can create whatever categories you want. Categorize the software however you want. You can categorize the software by its old software, its new software. You can categorize the software by it came from the 70s, it came from the 80s, it came from the 90s, it came from the, the double O's. You can categorize the software by it's easy, it's hard, whatever. You can create your own categories. Categories are just random. People just create them. You know, all this categorization, it's useful, but it's also random. So anyhow, there aren't really categories. If you go to Wikipedia and read about application software, here are some of the categories they've come up with. Entertainment software, educational software, content access software, enterprise infrastructure software, simulation, right? They're just random categories. And, uh, and the most important thing for you to know is just what in the heck is application software and where does it fall in this entire schema of things, right? So you know that, you know that. That's the important thing to know, where it falls in this entire schema of things. And it's also important to remember that application software has, you know, is in this place in this little diagram. So we got the hardware, 
Then we have the operating system that's written for specific hardware. Specifically, it's written for specific CPUs with specific instruction sets, right? That's what the operating system's for. And then application software has to be written for specific operating systems that were written for specific hardware. So if you buy application software for your Mac and you try to install it on your Windows machine, it won't work, right? If application software is written for the Mac, it's got to run on the Mac. If it's written for Windows, it's got to run on Windows, right? And Windows and Linux, actually, I think there might be some crossover. I haven't really played with Linux, so I don't know that. But it just kind of came to mind for me as I was saying all this. So application software, it's good to know that it falls right here in this uh, little schema. There you are the user. You use application software. And uh, we've already been over this diagram a lot. But the important thing to know about all that is that application software is written for specific hardware operating system platforms, right? Written for the Mac, written for Windows. And, uh, and a platform is like, you know, hey, this is my hardware and operating system. That would be a platform. So it's written for, I could have just said written for specific platforms, right? And when you get into the know of technology, if you see written for specific platforms, you would know that that means it's written for specific hardware operating system configuration. So application software is written for specific operating system hardware configuration. For Mac, it's written for Mac or it's written for Windows. And, uh, and that's why when you look up minimum system requirements, you see things like, uh, you know, you must be running this operating system or you must be running that operating system. So when we looked that up for uh, Quicken, we saw here is the minimum system requirements for Windows, right? It's written for Windows and it says you must be running Windows, one of these Windows, right? Or they also wrote it for the Mac and you must be running this Mac software OS, this Mac OS to, to run the Mac version. So the important thing to know is application software is written for a specific platform. All right, so what's the basic definition of application software? The basic definition of application software is a software you use to do something. It's software you use to do something. So it doesn't matter. And the word application, like I'm going to apply myself, I'm going to apply my computer to doing this now, right? Uh, that, the word application even sort of it, it, no, even sort of, it, it does directly denote uh, that, you know, it's used for an application. I'm going to apply my computer to doing this purpose right now. So it's application software, software used to do something. What are some examples? These are just a few of the many that are out there. Word processing, spreadsheets, databases, presentation software, like this software right here. Graphics, video, web browsers, audio editing equipment, photo, photo editing software, um, you know, uh, video games, that's all application software, all application software. It is also sometimes known as, aka, you'll sometimes hear it referred to as software, or as program, or as application, or as app, right? So these are all words that we use interchangeably to refer to application software. It's just software that you run on your computer, or your iPhone, or your phone, or Android phone, or whatever you got. It's just software you run. That's application software, no-brainer. Here, here, here is our lesson plan, our outline, our layout for what we're going to be learning this week. Uh, we're going to take a look at ownerships, rights, and licensing, the end user license agreement. We're going to kind of understand what the OOLA is. We're going to look at the different categorizations of software. We're going to look a little bit of piracy and intellectual property that we're going to cover intellectual property in more detail later. Uh, we're going to look at, a, you know, install versus web-based software. So software running in the cloud. We're going to look at what software suites are. Sweet. We're going to look at commonalities between software. And basically, I'm just going to say, you learn how to use one piece of software, you'll be able to use other pieces of software. Kind of like you learn how to drive one car, you'll be able to drive almost any car. And while there are differences between the cars, right? Like, okay, where is the stereo or where is my mirror adjuster, right? That's always the hard one to find for me when I get into a new car. It's like, how do I adjust my side mirrors? Where's the little control, right? So uh, just like when you learn to drive one car, it's kind of like that with software. Once you learn some of the things about software, like with word processing, it's like you get into spreadsheets, you're like, okay, I know a lot of the things that I learned in word processing, uh, and uh, I could apply those skills here to the spreadsheet, and I already know how to copy, paste, open, save, close, print, Right, uh, so a lot of the skills are transferable, commonalities between software. We'll also look at getting help when you get stuck with software, and I'll teach you a few things to uh, find solutions when you're like, I don't know how to do that. We're going to look at word processing software. 
We're going to learn a few things about word processing software, and then I'm going to show you, uh, you know, the cool thing of using template, templates, and I'm also going to show you how to write an amazing paper with Microsoft Word, which, if you're taking my class, uh, you know, at the college, uh, that's going to be one of your assignments. But if you're taking this just on Udemy, you are also going to get access to this amazing, amazing, amazing skill of being able to write a paper well and use Microsoft Word or word processing software really well. Uh, I'm also going to show you about spreadsheet software, and I already talked about some of the things we're going to cover there. I'm also going to show you about databases, and I already talked about all the things I'm going to cover there. You're also going to learn about presentation software, image editing software, video editing software, and some of the different ones out there, and what I think of them, because I've done a whole heck of a lot of video editing in my life. I thought I was going to be a filmmaker. I did turn into a filmmaker, but just not the kind that I thought I wanted to be when I was young. I'm making these films now. Uh, audio editing software. We're going to look at that. We're going to look at website development software, screen recording software, which is what I'm using to make these videos right here. I'm going to show you some essential computer skills, like how you can make money yourself online by creating teachings like this one at Udemy and uh, making money on YouTube, how people make money on YouTube. I'll show you that. Uh, we're also going to take a look at a great piece of software called Quicken for managing your personal finances, which is a lifesaver. And, uh, you know, we'll take a look at apps and project management software and CAD software, computer aid design software. And we're going to talk about finding just random software at download.com and, you know, how do you know if you can install or not install something you download from the Internet. We'll take a cool look, a quick look at a very cool commercial by Google called Parisian Love. And then we're going to watch a TED Talk called uh, about Khan Academy and uh, how education is being revolutionized. So that's what's laid out for us this week. Uh, some really great things to learn. And I'm looking forward to sharing with you all of this awesome information.